I have just bought this brand new telescope mount right here. It's a go-to mount. It's awesome. And I hope I get the name correct. Bresser. It's a Bresser go-to EQ5 mount. And it was only $499. And it has ball bearings on both axes. And it will hold up to 29 pounds according to the manufacturer. So it's a pretty hefty mount right here. And I have my old C8 Celestron on a Super Polaris mount right there to kind of compare it to. And like this counterweight down here is a 9.9 .9 pound counterweight. You can see it compared to the other ones. But I'm going to leave that off because I'm going to turn the telescope on and slew it and stuff to show you the slew speeds. Uh, I haven't bought a adapter for this telescope yet, so that's why the telescope's not on this mount. And I'm going to slew it here in a second. But it comes with uh, dual axis drives. And the hand controller has like 272,000 objects in its database. And it comes with a battery pack right there that holds, I think it's eight D cell batteries. But uh, the reason I'm making this video is like whenever you look online at pictures, they're like some picture from like really far away like that. And you can't really see the details. So I'm going to get up and close in this video so you can see like the details of the telescope. But I like the dampeners that they have at the base of the tripod. And they're just connected with like a screw right there onto the base. And then this part right here is like a nice solid piece that adjusts the height of the tripod. And it has the locking screws right there. There we go. Now that it's focused. But that's how you adjust the height of the tripod. The tripod has two inch legs to it and it's like really really sturdy and solid and it has this eyepiece tray right here this is how you tighten the the mount to the tripod itself and then this right here is the adjustment for the eyepiece tray to get it to go up and down and put pressure on the tripod legs to hold them out but here's what it looks like the base of the tripod itself is like really, really sturdy. And I'll show you this right here. There's just absolutely no play. This bolt right here holds this whole entire leg onto this base really, really solid. So this isn't moving. It's got the dampers on the bottom of the tripod leg and thick uh, tripod legs for holding a heavy load. And then for the, for the, latitude that you live at here's the adjustment i like the little adjusters right here you know for going left and right of the polaris and then going vertical in the sky with like these little adjustment screws that you can lock them out in place and you can see it says that it's got ball bearings inside so it's a nice smooth uh telescope mount here is the declination ring on this telescope the declination and right ascension is pretty much just going to be on the hand controller right here so that's what you'll be using to check out the right ascension and declination and control like what you're going to look at and i'll just go up right here you can look inside see what the inside of it looks like and just get a close-up view the polar axis finder telescope i purchased it with this uh, telescope mount the thing that i like about this versus my other one the other one just screws in and there's no adjustment to align it the center of the crosshairs up with the actual axis it just screws in you have to hope that it lines up Whereas this one, it has like these little adjustment screws right here, three of them. So you can spin this around the right ascension axis and then you're able to line up the polar finder scope 
crosshairs with the axis of the telescope so it's like real precision. I'm going to try to get the camera lined up right here with the eyepiece you can see in. But that's it right there. There's the central crosshairs and the axis and stuff on the polar finder scope. And here's the top. This is the locking mechanism right here for the telescope to put onto the top of the mount like that so you can get a good view of that and the next thing that I'm going to do is show you how all this is connected like really quick here's all the wiring how it's connected into the base and all the different ports that are there and this wire just goes up to the declination motor right there and then I will turn this thing on. There we go. And I'm gonna go and do this like really quick. The date and the time and everything, that looks good enough for the video for now. Daylight savings time, I'll just say yes. And the country and the city. You can go to a custom site. I already programmed in like Asheville, but I'll go, I'll go backwards. and go up to like country and city and Albania I'm going to choose what country that I live in like America and I'm going to go to like uh, in this direction and see if I can find a city near mine that's already programmed in here Denver, Dallas, Houston, Kansas, New Orleans, Chicago, Atlanta and that's good enough there's the longitude and latitude right there, and I'll just press OK, like Atlanta. System initialized. So like this, it tells you the site where you're at. This one right there, the object, you just put the object in that you want, and then the OTA is down there at the bottom. It's the, I think it's the orientation of the telescope tube. And what I like about this is look at the slew speeds. Uh, I can go to one time. I can go to two, eight times, 16, 64, 128, 256, 500 and 512. And I'll go to the max just to make the video short. I'm just going to slew this, and you can see the speed at which this thing slews. So there you have it, and I'll get closer for the declination. And there you go. So that is my short review of the telescope for now and a close-up look at all the components and everything that go to it. But I really like the mount. It's like really, really solid. And I'll go back and try to get the whole thing into the video. But I really like this mount and I hope you enjoyed this video.